Thank you. So, hi, I'm Niklas, and I want to talk about maintainers and users today. So, um, open source communities are a lot like villages, so every village is a little bit different, and people have different needs and problems, and they have kind of interesting relationship, uh, relationships to other villages. And yeah, uh, the projects at the ASF can learn a lot from each other, so they can exchange ideas, and that's why I would like to share some insights from a survey we ran at Apache Cordova, and my observations from our small village. So first, I want to give you some context about me, and then talk about the survey and what we learned in the survey. Then I'd like to discuss how you can get work done, and uh, what open source maintainer types we have, and finally, maybe have a quick look at sustainability in the discussion. So uh, many projects uh, have a very small but dedicated community. I think this is typical for SF projects and other projects as well. And these communities occasionally could do a health check on themselves to find out if they are still healthy and sustainable. And from time to time, the project should, should think about the state of the project, the, the overall big picture they have of the projects themselves, and then ask for the user's perspective on this, on the project. And yeah, so the users and the maintainers can work together to improve the project, make it more accessible, and make it successful for the future. And in, in the end, they may find work packages that need to be done to attract new maintainers and grow the projects and improve things. So some facts about me. I was I, I became a Cordova user many years ago and I used it at my old job for, for building uh, web, uh, mobile applications with web technologies. And our usage of Cordova in this job got more and more advanced and we needed features and fixes and updates for new platforms. So I got into the development of the project and after some time, I became a committer and PMC of the project. And uh, some time passed by, and now I no longer work on apps every day, but I'm still uh, in the project, helping out wherever I can. And a little fun fact, I don't really like front-end development in the sense of doing CSS, and I suck at doing CSS, but I still choose to do the presentation in CSS, so don't be confused why it's not so pretty as some other presentations we saw today. So uh, first look, have a look at, uh, at the village, at the open source village. So every project is a bit, little bit different and the communities can be very diverse. And yeah, the projects should have a look at themselves uh, from time to time and access, are we sustainable, are we healthy? Do we have enough maintainers to fix any problems or security issues? Are releases getting done? Do people vote on decisions and releases? And is it overall working good in the project, or do we have any obvious problems? Also, as pro projects get more mature, they age, the demographics may change, uh, companies come and go and uh, support projects and leave. So it's a constant process to have a look at the project and yeah, consider the healthiness of the project at all. So I was curious about our, our project uh, and how it's going. Uh, after some years, so it's a little bit older. So I proposed the idea of running a survey, and we collected the questions in a document on GitHub. And after some time, we created a, a Google uh, survey and announced it on our website and social media and distributed it a little bit. And it was open for a month, so we accepted answers for a month. And after the month, we closed the survey and compiled the results. So we got around 200 uh, responses on the survey, and we consider this a quite good result because only a fraction of people who find a survey and get informed about the survey actually answer. So I think we are quite happy about it, and we can assume there's still a quite great user base that follows the development of the project. So the first interesting result was that we got good usage data of uh, what platforms are used, what plugins are used, and what's really important and what stuff we could maybe deprecate. And we had lots of open questions, which gave good feedback on what's going well and what's not going well, what people like on the project, why they use our project, or why they switched over to a competitor project. And this was really interesting, but also lots of work to compile through those open questions and get a good number on what the people actually answered here. So open questions is a tricky part we found out. 
And uh, the most used platforms really matched our expectations and every, every uh, platform we deprecated in the recent years was not really used that much. So we made some good decisions and it matched our expectations, which, which is really good. And my personal feel of issues and pressing issues and what's going on, what's good, what's not good, uh, matched kind of the survey results. So it's good to get this confirmation or some different view on the project. We got some good ideas to work on which yeah, created some big tasks. And the biggest one is probably uh, documentation. So documentation is always a, a big part of open source projects. We, we, we lack some documentation, some is outdated. So this is a big task we should attack. So after a survey, it's probably a good time to do some actual, actual work. As I mentioned, we created some larger tasks, but we don't have really the manpower to attack them right away. So we uh, discuss them, file them, and it should be a good project for people who jump in in the future, but the current maintainership cannot handle it. So as typical in open source, it's mostly scratch your own itch. That's what how, how I got into the project. Uh, we had some problems, we fixed those problems ourselves, got them, got them in the upstream, and uh, now we're happy with the project again. But yeah, it's hard to find people for the more boring or difficult tasks because sometimes it's not their itch. Yeah. And this is where I'm still looking for ideas. And a lot boils down to motivation. As I said, scratch your own itch is like good motivation to do stuff because we want to do it for our business case. But it, like documentation is not really our business or it's not really critical for the success of our commercial project. So we, <coughs> so we don't do it in, in a traditional business work. I, some time ago, I found this really great uh, quote from a book about open source, and I think this boils down a lot on uh, open source, what, what gets done and what doesn't get done. So there's intrinsic motivation. I fix things because I need them for my project. I, I love the project. That's why I do the work for the project, but only to a limited capacity. If it doesn't fit my intrinsic motivation, I won't do it. That's uh, it's as simple as it is. And there's also sometimes extrinsic motivation, but from my experience, it's pretty rare. So a company might pay an employee or more to do some general maintenance work uh, because they need the success of the overall project, but it's really rare and uh, the stuff uh, yeah, doesn't get done, like general maintenance or community building, marketing or user support, which is like you need extrinsic motivation in, in some form most of the time. So the big question is what to do about all those tasks that don't fall into someone's motivation window. So I do stuff I find interesting, I find satisfying, but uh, what about those tasks nobody finds interesting or satisfying? So I'm still looking for ideas. I also like the idea of different maintainer types. I have some uh, experience and observations about my projects and other projects. So there are different types of maintainers that fill different roles and do different uh, tasks in the project. And of course, a person can fill multiple types or multiple roles. But I think it's good to know what types are needed to run a project and what's, what makes a project success successful. The, the following names are totally made up by me. I'm still looking for better descriptions and names for those types. So if you have any feedback, reach out. A little warning. Now there's some AI, com AI content coming because I'm even worse in drawing than writing CSS. I asked ChatGPT to draw some images of the maintainer types I had in mind. So I put down the description of the types and got some uh, pictures of them because this presentation is really lacking pictures. So I think one of the most important and interesting types is the silent hero. So somebody who's in the project and has lots of experience and lots of time and energy to, to work on the project, but stays in the background. We have one person in our project who, who does lots of the development work and boring tasks, refactoring, releases, creating releases, updates uh, from some external dep dependencies, sometimes documentation and cleaning up stuff. So it's like lots of the stuff you have uh, to do in a project, but are not really shiny or uh, yeah, from the outside world. And this person I have in mind is also not really outward facing of the project. So, so he likes to stay in the background. 
and do the important stuff and get stuff done and not all this fancy stuff that's uh, on the outside and yeah. So he doesn't need attention but does a lot of coding work and wants to work e efficiently and drive progress and yeah, it's a bad thing to get pers people like this uh, stuck and yeah, disturb their flow. Another important uh, persona is a helping hand, so somebody who is working on the outside perception of the project, so helping ask, help to ask questions, answer questions, support, try edge issues, and yeah, work everything that's outward facing, and do the support stuff, and yeah, be, maybe be the first contact person, the real person you, you reach out to if you get in contact with the project. So it's important to have good people there as well, because it's for newcomers, uh, new users and stuff, and new contributors, really important to have a good contact person and good communication skills here, so it's very important. Some projects also have a kind of a marketing person, so somebody who promotes the project, goes to conference, speaks about it, writes blog posts, websites, videos, whatever, podcasts, so they keep an eye on the on the web on the documentation on the website. They make sure the project is seen and recognized out there, and yeah, promoted and are interested in growing the community, growing the project, and actually yeah, promoting it in a in a way that the project grows. So the the, the last persona I have is uh, the founder of the project the legend, somebody who's been there forever, basically. So they maybe started the project or joined very, very early and have lots of deep knowledge. They know the history behind things. They have the context for everything. They can st tell stories about the project and yeah, talk about the old days and have visions for the new days and are really important for like the whole, the whole get-together of the community. And sometimes they may not be active anymore. So they are still around, they're watching what, what is going on in the project, they're helping whenever they are needed, but they might have moved on to another job, to another uh, project, and are not really active in the daily work anymore. But it's important to try to keep them in the project, to keep them around, to keep them reachable at least. So sometimes you have a weird question about a problem that you cannot explain, but there's code from many years ago, and then you reach out to those persons and yeah, get their experience and their help. So it's also a very interesting type. I think many projects have them. Now that we have some ideas what types of maintainer exists, yeah, you can ask yourself what type are you, and what role do you fill in, what might, you might focus on in a project, what you want to do in a project, and yeah, where you might want to improve your involvement in this project. And if you know anybody who could fit a role in your project, try to get them on board, ask them uh, for their skills and find tasks for them, onboard them, yeah, teach them what to do and tell them about your ideas, your vision for the project and maybe the problems they can, can fix together with you. So the different types of personas are really critical. I think it's important that Every project has a good mix of people and uh, yeah, a diverse community in those personas as well. So it helps the project grow because not everybody can fill every role, I think. And if you have any ideas or feedback on these personas, better names, better images, uh, reach out to me. I created a discussion. You can uh, put stuff there and I think I will work on this for a little bit more to define those persona things. I think it's really interesting for, for the ASF to have an idea and maybe other projects have different types of people involved. So now that we had a look at the, the people in the project and the users and the users' perception and the problems, I think it's important to keep projects sustainable and uh, assess the sustainability of a project from time to time. So every project should have people on board that are available for fixes and security issues and yeah, get them out in time and address everything that's problematic. Also, the decisions should be made and uh, not stalled. So if somebody proposes an idea, it should get traction at some point or not die in the process and people should get, jump on board and help and give advice and their opinion and yeah, 
keep the project going, so it's critical to look at this uh, from sustainability as well. Also releases and, and votes need to get out. We, because we are a small group of active maintainers, it sometimes takes a while to get all those votes and get uh, the re required reviews for release. So, so this is also you should look out for. Also technical depth should be addressed from time to time. So if refactorings uh, are started and not done successfully or never started, it's an indication that the project is not really sustainable anymore or it might be not sustainable in the future. So you should see activity in the development. I think uh, looking at sustainability is important if you consider joining a project or adapting a project for your maybe bigger project, commercial project, product, whatever. So have a look at the project and find out or get your opinion if it's sustainable or not. When I look at open source projects, I look at different things. So it's uh, you get some experience from time to time to get some indication. Is this a healthy project? Is it sustainable? And yeah, if I should really adopt it or the project dies in a year after I really start my business on it. So it's really important. And yeah, you need to get this experience and getting a feel on it. So some, some closing words. So as I said, every project is different. Every person is different. So have a look out there, check, check your projects. I, I hope you got some ideas of what people you might need in your project. And yeah, <coughs> sorry. And I would like to close with a call of action too. So con you could consider running a survey if you have, uh, if you don't have any idea how the project is doing. Is actually anybody using it? What problems are out there? What parts of the project are you even used? So some projects are really big, and you might consider your your workforce on one part that's really. Uh, really used by the people and deprecate different plugins, features, whatever, and yeah, use your time wisely because it's not unlimited and yeah, we should consider, uh, we should use our resources wisely. Also projects need occasional health, health checks as I mentioned a few times, so have a look at your project and take action if you see some problems there. Uh, another call for the maintainers, please encourage contributions, but I think this is really self-explanatory. You usually do that. Be, be open and uh, help people that want to jo join the project. And for all open source beginners, just start by contributing. Somebody will guide you for sure and uh, will help you out, uh, I'm pretty sure. So I'm already done. Any questions, ideas? Uh, any takes on those personas, I think it's really interesting. So if you want to reach out, go for it. And this is the link to my slides. I will publish the final version later. And yeah, thank you very much.